Welcome back, everyone. This is Rudy Rodriguez Shomat with Come On Now, the podcast. I have with me the one, the only three-time Grey Cup champion, Nick Taylor. Um, this is a, an episode in which we actually recorded yesterday. But for some reason, there was some glitches in the internet sphere, <laughs> and it the voices weren't matching the faces. The it was just uh, I don't we don't know what happened. So Nick and I are China. here tonight. China, China. happened. China <laughs> happened. Um, we were with Donald yesterday, but unfortunately he can't be with us tonight. So you know we really wanted to make sure that we got some content up for you guys. Um, cause that's obviously first and foremost importance is to put out our content, but Nick, go ahead and introduce yourself to the audience. I think you already did. Um, three times CFL great cup champion, a uh, former division one basketball player. You know, I rock the mic when I come on this thing every time and, and I just destroy Rudy for the most part. And then sometimes we're happy and, and we have a kumbaya moment. Um, I'm a, I mean, in light of the combine going on and things in that nature, I was a former 4-2 runner. I mean, would I have beat the record this year? Possibly. I have ran a 4-0-9 before, but that's neither here nor there. That's pretty fast. Um, before we start up, Nick is a graduate of Miami Norland High School. He was the on the first state championship team that they had uh, as a starting point guard in 2006 uh, where they beat winter park winter haven no in the winter park. winter havens in, is no it was winter, uh, it was winter park. it was winter park it was, it was winter, son. yes you beat austin river's son that year right not or no, he, he was later on it was, the, it was the older one um yeah. jeremiah rivers jeremiah rivers. jeremiah rivers yeah um but yeah uh Lawton Williams, his his former coach, who's still the coach there, has been there forever, has won six day championships, and they are playing tonight. Well, when you see this recording, they'll be playing tonight at eight o'clock in Lakeland for a seventh state championship against Tampa Blake. So uh let's go Vikings and bring home number seven. That being said, we have some basketball to talk about. And um uh, there is a team that for some reason everyone loves or everyone loves or everyone hates. There's typically not something in between. You either hate them or you love them. And the, the national media has this love affair with them because realistically, if they could have them play themselves in the finals, they would do that every single year because it draws ratings. Um, that, is the Los Ange those, that is the Los Angeles Lakers. And of note, recently there's been nonstop blah, blah, blah about how they're contenders. So the question of the day is, are the Los Angeles Lakers actual contenders? Nick, go ahead. Uh, since I'm the only objective person here, and I'm going to tell you that the Lakers are definitely contenders. You know why they're contenders? Because there's only one team that really could give them problems. Besides last night's Sacramento game, uh, it's the Denver Nuggets. And... The Denver Nuggets give them problems because they have a big man that actually could play big, and then they have a guard who can get hot at any moment and just light them up, and that would give them problems. There's not too many other teams that post the threat of having a big man and a guard dynamic like that in the Western Conference. Um, as we see last night, their only team that could give them another problem like that would be the Sacramento Kings that's in the West. and the odds of them playing Sacramento is almost zero to none because of the seedings. You know, the seeders would definitely just have them avoiding each other. And then it'll probably have them avoiding Denver. So Denver's the only team really that I will be worried about because Denver gave them problems last year because they swept them. But it was a it was a very competitive sweep, if I may say so myself. And this team is coming back with Austin Reeves, they're coming back with D'Angelo, who's been playing phenomenal lately. He's taking pressure off LeBron. Austin taking pressure off LeBron. LeBron doesn't have to do so much. But when AD steps up and play like the top 12 player he is, and then you combine him with another top 12 player in LeBron, you have something that not any other team in the West has. It's two top 12 players on their roster. And when you have that and you go into the playoffs when the games slow down, you have a team that can compete anywhere. And LeBron has a history 
of being able to win a game on the road, except for last year. So he can do it again. They will be playing probably in the eighth seed. I think they'll catch the Mavericks. Um, they're a game or so behind the Mavericks, maybe two games now. But they, they could definitely catch them and get the eighth seed. They get the eighth seed, they'll probably win the playing game against whoever they play. And and they will go from there. Um, like I say, man, the key to them has been Rui Hachimura. Rui is giving them a different versatility that they that they that they desperately need because you could put him on a big, and then AD could do what he does best, be a help side defender. So that's something big for them also. And like I said, Rui is also shooting forty percent from three. What LeBron needs, what LeBron play with, he play with a lot of people that spread the court. He drive, he kick, he kick it in them, they hit three. Austin Reeves can shoot it well. D'Angelo can shoot it well. So they're definitely contenders. Um, they're 10 and 5 in their last 15 games. Um, they're 22 and 11 at home. Um, I like I like my chances with them. When the games slow down, there's nobody else that can beat them. You're not gonna take the Clippers. I wouldn't trust them with I wouldn't trust them with anything because they have shown time and time again that when it's come time to put the pedal to the metal, they won't. They'll walk out They'll walk out the game. They'll quit. They'll flat out quit. I'm not trusting Harden and way off P. That's just two people I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trusting them two. And then you have another person in Kawhi Leonard. I trust Kawhi, but I don't trust his knees. Who else is a contender in the West? The Pelicans, they're too young. They're not ready for the, the Lakers. The Lakers beat them every time. Um, What's the other team? Um, who they just beat the other day, Rudy? Um, the young guys. Oh, Shay, Shay, okay, okay, OKC. yeah, they beat, they beat OKC. Three to one. Second, this year. Second, second night of a back to back. Oh, them kids are eighteen years old. That don't mean nothing. That's like AAU mm-hmm. basketball players in high school. You can run up and down the court every day. They're not worried about that. You can't count that. If you if you mentioned another older team, I'd have, I'd have gave you credit for that. But when you mentioned a bunch of fifteen year olds running up and down the court. On a back to back night, they can do that in their sleep, man. I'm not worried about that. They beat them three times to one this year. Another team that they will be is the Timberwolves. And what we just found out, Cat is might be out for a while. But even if Cat was there, you know why we don't trust them? Because when it comes to playoffs, Cat kind of get a, he kind of strengths and plays like a five ten player. And Rudy Gobert gets exploited every time. They run pick and rolls on him in the playoffs, and that's the defensive player of the year who can't play defense in the playoffs. You know why? Because they exploit him. They put him in pick and roll situations all the time, especially if you have a shooter that could do it. He sinks, he drops, and he shoot, and they shoot threes on him. Or he switches and they blow past him. So the Lakers are definitely contenders, if you put it that way. So my definition of contender is not someone that... Can contend. No, contending means you can win the championship. They can't win the championship. Yes. Uh, all, they Denver, uh, all, they all, is, all they need is someone else to beat Denver. Yeah, someone yeah. else to beat Denver. Yeah, that is that is that is what you're sticking with. Match up. That's what you're sticking with. Um, my guess is Denver will end up being the one seed. They're a game and a half out. Minnesota just lost Cat for probably at least four to six weeks. Uh, he tore his meniscus, and um, OKC. I mean, maybe they could be the one seed. It's possible. Yeah. I don't think they're contenders. I'm sick and tired of a media narrative pushing the Lakers. Based on one guy, Anthony, uh, LeBron. I was going to say Anthony Davis, LeBron James. They're pushing it off of one guy. Let's just be honest. If we, if we can just, at least if we can be honest with ourselves, it would make things a whole lot easier because there's no way in the world that anyone on earth would ever say a team that's 34 and 30 and the 10 seed with 18 games left would be a contender for the championship. Oh, we, were not, we, we were not calling the Miami Heat contenders when they were two minutes from being eliminated in the second playing game last year. And realistically, you and I both picked them to lose. I thought they'd get swept last year. And as I did say, the Lakers uh, advancing was a fluke. The Heat advancing the way they did happen to be a fluke, in my opinion. Yes, did I get excited? The fluke being that Giannis got hurt. Yes, I thought after we won, I think it was game one, I got excited. Was I rational? Probably not because we, we, we got our ass kicked in the second game, the yeah. one game that Giannis didn't play. Exactly. So, well, we got our ass kicked in that game. So, and then we managed to win those games. I mean, look, and we can, we can, we can be real. 
Jimmy Butler. We saw the greatest playoff performance in NBA history in that series. Bluntly, we saw the greatest one series playoff performance. It was better than Dwayne Wade in the finals. What Jimmy Butler did in that series, at least for the Miami Heat, it was even better than anything LeBron James ever did for the Heat, including that game versus the Boston Celtics. What Jimmy Butler did in that one, in, in those two games where we're down 15, 16 points in the fourth quarter, the 56 point game was the best game I've ever seen a Miami Heat player play. It, I mean, it was unbelievable for the situation at hand. You're down 15, 16 points in the fourth, and he just goes completely off the fucking wall. That said, do I expect Jimmy? I mean, I would love it if he has another has another series where he's averaging 40 a game. Do I expect it? Not necessarily. I think that's what makes it flukish. It's like the greatest thing you've seen. Now, the Celtics, I thought, was, you know, we were – that was more of a fluke because, I mean, realistically, yeah, we were confident at that point, but I don't know that anyone thought that the Heat would be up 3-0 in that series. I, I mean, I thought it would go seven. I just didn't think it would go 3-0, 3-0, <laughs> you know. And, and then we get the benefit of – I don't think the Celtics beat us in game seven because Jason Tatum getting hurt, he was still playing the whole game. He was hurt. We beat the snot out of them. It wasn't like it was a close game. If it had been a one- or two-point game, you said you're saying, yeah, we, 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 we dodged a bullet, you know, but they dodged a bullet the game before that when they hit a freaking layup on a rebound to, look yeah. to, to beat us in Miami. That said, the Lakers, you use – Regular season stats. I wish we had yesterday's recording because this was a lot more animated. Um, yeah, we, 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 we yeah, we we use regular season stats, but no, you know, I I got I actually had time. See, when I have time to actually do go back and look at some stuff, I'm actually able to correct myself. And yesterday we made a bet for a hundred dollars that the Lakers would be a nine or a ten seat. I made a bet saying they're gonna be a nine or a ten. Nick says they won't be, but apparently we rescinded that bet because no. LeBron James has a vagina. And he's maybe hurt now. No, I'll take the uh, bet. Eight feet. Oh, you'll take it. You'll t- no, I said nine, I said nine or ten. So and I said they're going to be the eight. Okay. Well, or are we re- are we redoing the bet? Okay. And then <laughs> then it's on because last night against the Sacramento Kings, they were up nineteen with two minutes to go in the first quarter, and at halftime they were down thirteen. That's the NBA. They it happen. It happens. They get outscored fifty-two to twenty over fourteen minutes. On their home floor. Yeah, that happens a lot. Um, that Even in today's NBA, that does not happen a lot. Uh, at one point, they were down 22 or 23 in the, in the fourth quarter. Um, and then LeBron checks himself out with about three minutes to go when the game is pretty much over because apparently he hurt his ankle. And this was the thing I, I, I didn't bring up yesterday, which now because we get a redo, I get, to ask, I get to ask you, Nick, you've been injured, right? Yeah. Are there days when you've been injured? When you've been injured, where you you wake up one day and you feel good, yeah. And then the next day you don't feel good again. Yeah. Okay. Which brings me back to last season in the playoffs when they played against the Memphis Grizzlies, and I actually had to remind myself and research it again because I didn't do that. I was sloppy in my presentation. John Morant got hurt in Game One got hurt in game one in a four point game in the fourth quarter he left the game in a four point game they were trailing they left, okay. he left in a four point game okay he, he didn't play game two but they lost game. so in game one they got outscored they, they got in game they one they got out okay yeah i'm gonna get there in game okay. one they got outscored 23 11 after he went out of the game so a four point game turned into a 16 point blowout injuries do matter flukish things happen he doesn't play game two they win game two Memphis yep. wins game two. Yep. This is one of those weird things about basketball. But if you actually give me a team and say John Morant's not playing for 82 games for the Memphis Grizzlies, I got a Memphis Grizzlies team that's 22 and 41. Okay. No, 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 no. no. Right. This year. This year. Oh, no. It's, it's, we're, what's, we're, what's different about John Morant's the difference? Dylan we're clam- Brooks? We were clamoring. Don't, don't Dylan don't, Brooks? Don't, is that the difference? We got Marcus Spark, but Marcus, I mean, again. Is there tw- John Morant's played eight games this year? They're twenty two. Okay. They're twenty two and forty one. The previous the fuck, two years. The previous the, two years. What were they record in the regular that? season when he missed games? They were had a, they were twenty five and five or some shit like that. But would you take a Memphis team with John Morant or one without John Morant? Hmm. Let's be honest with ourselves. Yeah, don't bring them. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, let's be honest with ourselves. Okay, go ahead. Injuries matter. Yep. So he comes back and he has a good game, a bad game, a good game. 
a bad game. He had a he had multiple bad games. The last game in that series, I think he was like five for twenty. Is that is that not is that not normal for young stars? Is, in the could it be normal that when you have a sprained right wrist, your shooting hand, that it can affect your shot? Absolutely. Again, oh. one day he might feel better because the Toradol shot worked. The next day he might not feel better. The pain might be killing him. You don't know that. Or the, That's defense, was, or the defense was phenomenal. <laughs> Today's defense in the NBA is not phenomenal. Ever. Oh, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. Ever. We're not gonna ever. Do that. Ever. So, so hold, same- on, hold, on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me stop you right there. Let me do this this thing for you old timers who think the defense old is not, timers. The defense is not phenomenal. I just watched but, the Heat blow a, blow a 15-point lead and watch them let guys shoot threes right in their face. Rudy, the game is Watching different. them shoot them. All y'all did back in the yeah, game was hover around, the, no, mm-hmm. hover around the paint and foul and call like, that good defense. Uh, uh, of That's course. Not good. That, no, hey, I, I, we played good defense because we fouled hard. Yeah, I know. You did 2-0-6. Yeah. I know. You fouled no, the whole lot. No, no, we did no, not. We didn't no, we foul. No, we didn't foul, right? The difference between oh, yeah, today yeah. game is that the court is spread mm-hmm. and guards can actually dribble and break you down mm-hmm. better than they could before and they mm-hmm. can get their shot off. And shoot threes at a, a yeah. line, at a way better rate to get their shot off. And now when you when you do that and the court is spread because the five man can shoot and the four can shoot threes. Bam still can't shoot. Yeah, that's one team. So that's, no, what that's that a dude, lot of that, that's a lot of so, teams actually. So that, that put a lot of defenders in a one on one situation with a lot more space to cover. And nobody could card anybody one on one naturally. You know why they have for the space? For the they can't part, touch them. No, that's not why. That is. That's because people can shoot better, Rudy. So if you're running, if you're running through the lane, and I'm prohibited from putting a forearm into your body as you cross the lane, which was allowed until about seven, eight, maybe ten years ago. Rudy, people are getting blown uh, by. Yeah, you're gonna uh, put your forearm not, in their back no, right now. You're, no, you're not hearing what I'm saying. I'm not talking about a driving guard. I'm talking about guys that are shooters cutting through the lane. To Ooh. get open. No, this was a rule. You, you can't, you can't oh, ignore the what? fact that the rules have been changed to benefit it, offense. Really? The league wants offense. So, if the league, and if you don't think the league wants offense, you didn't watch the All Star game. Rudy, Rudy. Because that's what every y'all, game looks like. You today. go back and watch the old film. Y'all act like they were just out there hounding players the whole time. Oh, my time God. No, defense. they played they played man-to-man defense. They, I know you're going to sit here and tell me you can't hand check. Um, oh, no. One day it was hand checking doesn't, doesn't work. The next day it works. As long no. as you were guarding Shaq, it works. But when no. someone else uses it on you, you can use it against them and knock their hand off. Yeah, yeah. When literally, when you ask any literally any player that played in that era of hand checking, Hand checking absolutely stops your forward momentum. Rudy, they weren't even hand checking that far out on the court because you know why right. they weren't picking up people thirty feet up the court. That's a difference, yeah. man. That changes. They're the picking game. up guys thirty feet for no goddamn reason. It's no, stupid because they can shoot. Now. If, if, if they you know, if, if, if Luca, I'm gonna, I would stand and watch Steph Curry take 20, 30, 30 foot three point shots. I would, fired. and you'll be fired. I might be fired, and you know what? I watched his coach, his coach. Let Jalen Brown score 19 points in the first quarter, uncontested threes, not from 30 feet out, from literally kissing the line. Yeah, I said shoot bad, 30 feet. Oh, no, it. he said that was a strategy. So yeah, he, should be, he should be fired. Along he with should you. be fired. Along uh, with you. You, you know what? I didn't say let him shoot from the freaking three-point line, which is a free throw. I said make him shoot it from 30. If he mm-hmm. wants to shoot 30-footers, he'll shoot 30-footers. I'm not going to guard 30-footers, dude. They, they I'm not even, guarding anybody. You have I'm, to, man. You're gonna I'm look. not guard. You don't have to. There's only three or four guys that can shoot from 30 feet out. All right, only 20, four, 20, four, 20, let, 20, let's stop. Let's 20, stop making up stuff. 27 most feet. These, most of these guys are kissing the fucking line 27 20. feet. If they put that three-point line at 26, 27 feet, you're going to see the mid-range game come back, like I said last week. No, you because won't. these guys can't shoot from that yes, deep. Yes, they can. Jimmy Rudy. Butler can't make a 28-foot three-point shot. Rudy, Jimmy Butler couldn't make a 20-foot. Hyman, Hyman, he's a 46% three-point shooter this year. Yeah, he couldn't um, make a 25-footer last year. I mean, well, before, he can't make a tw- and he and, damn sure can't make a 28-footer. And, and you know what? There's only one guy in the Miami Heat that can make a 28-footer, Duncan Robinson. One guy. Uh, one guy. One. Scary Terry. No, he can't. You, did you see how many air balls he shot against fucking Denver last week? Yeah. He shot six air balls. The ball slip off your hand. A no, because his knee is jacked up. He couldn't have no lift. Yeah, but 28 happens. feet, and, and he was and he shot an air ball from the freaking corner three. So, yeah, that happens. I mean, well, it, again, 
I'm not it's, it's, 20. It's, it's still harder to defend. Again, now, like, I, like I said, the Lakers are not a contender. They can't beat Denver. They're not going to beat OKC when it matters. And you're going to sit here and tell me they've beaten them three or four times. So, you know, so, you know, so, who, so you know, who, they, you know who's got three wins over, over the Lakers right now? Because you just said that regular seasons, they matter, but they don't matter because the Kings have beaten no, Lakers also, three times. Also, three times. Also, also um, okay, the matchup problem. Also, OKC. I, I think I think OKC is actually a, but it's, it's a regular season game. No, it's a regular man. season game yeah, again. They're all, they're all and if you think experience. and if you and if you think Minnesota is a a bad matchup, the Lakers are a bad matchup for Minnesota. Actually, that might be the best matchup for Minnesota because it's the one matchup that Rudy Gobert can guard a center. No, because Anthony. Not. Because Anthony pick- Dave, they can run pick and roll all day. He back up off him. Who's gonna shoot the ball? You gonna back the up Lakers are one of the worst. The Lakers are one of the worst shooting teams in the league. That's so why they're not good. LeBron shoots it at what forty uh, percent? They're like the they're the 29th worst three point shooting team and in the league. How, how have they been shooting lately? They've been shooting way better. Lately, right? I don't care about what. Lately. I'm about that's over what, the course of the what, season. That's, that's what matters. Is how LeBron you, James. Oh, how by the way, play, how I, you I, playing I, once you're going into the play? I did. I did check this. Oh, they just lost by. At double digits on their home court after they led by 19. Um, they were up. They they um yesterday. So they're 34 and 30. They have nine at home, nine on the road. Right? LeBron yeah. James has missed eight games all year. Anthony Davis has missed four games. That's it. Again, the, only four games. I verified it. I verified oh. it. AD four games. Like, damn, four, 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 four games. Okay, and that's AD. why I said yesterday. You have a team that you say has got the sixth, two of the top 12 players in the NBA. Yep, they do. And they're 34 and 30. And their their best two players have not missed games. I, I also Last year, because... LeBron missed 25 or 30 games. AD missed like 25 games. They're not missing games this year, and they're 34 and 30. And uh, now we get to blame Russell Westbrook. We get, to, he, you know, he got let go this year, right? Was it last year? I don't even remember. Was it last I mean, year this year? La- last year when they went on the We run. let go. They, they had Pat Beverly, who they let go of. He was the problem, too. Even though you think Pat Beverly is the second coming of God, and he is, Pat, Pat yeah, yeah is. apparently Pat Beverly couldn't mess with LeBron, Queen James, you know, and but they uh, Austin, after Austin, them. Austin Reeves can't defend. Rory Hachimura is a good player. He yeah, is. Yeah. Torian Prince sucks. He's, he's not any good. He's he's, he's, he's he, he can't do shit. He's gonna come in. D'Angelo play. Russell is actually really good to me, and yet they keep shitting on him over and over and over again. I like D'Angelo Russell. If they'd wanted to trade him to us, I'd have taken him in a second. In a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. But they don't use him properly. There's days where he doesn't come back in the game when he's going crazy. Yeah, that's I don't that, so you know that's my problem with the, the, co- the, the players the don't trust the, the coach. It's the coach. I mean, that. last night Anthony Davis basically shit on Darvin Ham in the in the post press conference in his interview. He shit on him. This is your coach. You just shit on him on an interview. And you don't even you're you're too dumb to realize that you did. He basically criticized the entire game plan. If I leave Sabonis, Sabonis has a rebound and a dunk. If I don't leave Sabonis, De'Aaron Fox is going to get a layup on us, which means basically your defense can't guard quick guards. They can't. That's the problem. You can't. You can't. And and so there's a couple of quick guards that play for the Timberwolves, at least one that I know of. There is a pretty quick guard that plays for the Thunder that I know of. Um, There's definitely a quick guard that plays for uh, not really for the Clippers. The quick guard. Um, Go ahead. There, there's, but you, those are the teams that they're going to be facing in the first but, round potentially they also, if they, if they get they past also, the Warriors in the playing they, game. So the quick guard also has to become com has to be a combination with a big man that can actually do some damage down low. Well, and obviously to, every team that I'm mentioning has guys that can do damage. Who uh, who's the big man? Uh, the, if the, if Carl Anthony Towns is healthy, he's still a big man. I mean, I mean, and, I mean, and, they're, he, and they're 44 and 19. They're not a. I mean, let's. We have to stop acting like regular seasons don't matter. No, no, you know who says? Matter. You know who says regular seasons don't matter? Are teams that are not in the top four no. seeds? Because you and I both know that the, there's simple facts of basketball. There's never been a four seed to win an NBA Finals. There's only been one five seed to get to the NBA Finals. The Miami Heat in the bubble. There's never only been one six seed, which is the only team that's ever won a Finals below a three. So, That's the Houston Rockets when they repeated as champion. Never been a seven, okay. two eights with the Knicks. And we knew the Knicks in that season were not an eight seed because the season was shortened. And yeah. they were literally six games out of first or seven games out of, out of the – it was it was like a seven-game gap from one seed to eight seed when they played us, the Heat, in whatever, 99, was it? I and Alan Houston broke my heart. 
dealing with Patrick Ewing. Yeah. Back in and the well, whole. that was Alan Houston broke my heart with that one that bounced off the front rim, hit backboard, drops mm-hmm. in, which was 78 77. Um, so, but that wasn't a real eight seed, and the Heat realistically last year weren't a real eight seed. Our, but maybe we were actually. I, I I don't even know. We but were, we were eight seed. We were an eight seed. We played like shit most of the season, so we were an eight seed. That's why no one thought we were going to win. So, so really, are you, when you sit here and say seeding doesn't matter, of course it matters. What where are we? When, where do we get in this brain? Only LeBron James gets the benefit of seed doesn't matter because he played eight years. In the in the finals, in the shittiest fucking conference, the East was trash for a decade, and you know this. We were we experienced it. I mean, come on, we had gifts playing the Pacers. They were, it, 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 they they were, were not. They, did they you were. ever doubt? Did you ever think the Heat would lose? Hell yeah, I did. I you thought, did. Yeah. You thought the Heat would lose the Pacers. Man, but with that sixty six wins, they had forty seven wins. You really thought that he would lose to the Pacers? Man, David West, Roy Hibbert was giving us problems. Oh, you mean David West, the guy that LeBron can't guard? I don't know because he that, can't guard one through five. That, that's the one power forward he can. Uh, uh, but but Kevin, you know what? Kevin, you knew Kevin, that playoff. You knew playoff Kevin, P wouldn't be a playoff piss. He's no, a playoff no, no, piss. He pissed in his leg. Back then he was he wasn't he wasn't way off P. He still playoff playoff oh, piss oh, on my leg. So you trust? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Are you, so you're telling me that the big man that you trust in Minnesota is? Carl Anthony Towns. I didn't say anything about trust him. You said a, a, a combination. Anthony yeah. Edwards and Carl Anthony yeah. Towns are a great combination, regardless of what you think, what you want to say, because yes. they're young and young and dumb. No, no, that's not why. It's because of the past experience from watching Carl well, Anthony Towns well, in the playoffs. Well, well, well what you just, what you presume is as you get older, you're going to get more mature and you're going to fix what you do. Uh, they're, they're, have, they're the best to, team in the West right now, and they've been us. like he, this all. He has to show us. For one, for one, they're the best team in the West, and they have the number one defense in the NBA. These are facts. Yeah, but they have yeah. the number one defense in the NBA. They have they have gave up the least amount of points, and it's not actually close and, by and, three and a half by three and, points. They're the and, best defense, and their anchor on defense does not play in the playoffs because they exploit them. And you? he will be just fine if he has to guard Anthony Davis. He's not going to not play. Like, stop saying this guy. You're comparing if he's guarding a six six guard. No, are the, are the Lakers going to take out Anthony Davis to put a six six no. guard in? No, but they're going to run pick and rolls with him. What is he? They're going to run pick and roll all day. I'm going to let Anthony Davis shoot jump shots. No, I'll play under it. No, so you, the the person that's actually coming. I'm going to play. I'm going to play under every pick and roll the Lakers run if it's involving Rudy Gobert. And why? Oh. Because the Lakers can't shoot. D'Angelo can shoot. Hey, Austin, again, Austin Reeves can shoot. LeBron not can shoot again. Uh, are you going to run pick and roll with AD and LeBron? Mm-hmm. I'm absolutely, I'm absolutely letting LeBron shoot threes. Okay, he shoots it at forty percent. Okay, go ahead. This year, this year, that's what matters, right? But again, but again, you if it matters this year, doesn't it matter that the Timberwolves are forty four and nineteen and have the best defense in basketball? Uh, nope, because no, have... it doesn't. Okay, it doesn't. <laughs> so the best defense in basketball doesn't matter because you know who had one of the best defenses in basketball last so, year? The Heat. Oh, okay. The Heat. Okay. And the, Lakers, the Lakers, you know where the Lakers' defense is in basketball this season? I'll let you know. They are eleventh. Uh, they're 11th in the West. They're in the bottom third in the league. Okay. They're terrible okay. defensively. Okay, so once the playoffs they're come around. They're terrible defensively. Anybody besides the Denver Nuggets put that bet up. Minnesota, Oklahoma City, the Clippers, and the Nuggets can all beat them. I think the Suns can beat them. I absolutely think the Suns can. Don't, don't sit here and tell me they don't have no experience now. Devin Booker's been in the finals. No, no, I, I KD's think, won two championships. So, 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 so there's I, multiple teams that can beat them. I actually, so this, this, what? I actually have, I actually have the Suns right there with the with the Lakers as the second, third team in the West. Well, the Suns have guys that have been there, done that, and that's actually why, can still physically do it. And Booker's a young guy still. That's He's not I, old. They're the second, third team to me. That's why I said they're with the Lakers again. That's, but you're, that's, but they're better than the Lakers. They're contenders. They're, both they're contenders. better than, but they're better than the Lakers. They're neck, so how, neck and neck. They're not neck and neck. They're better than the Lakers. Record wise, yeah, yeah, that but makes you better. Does it? Does it? Does it? Let's see how many games Devin Booker's missed. I'm just curious, real quick. Him, a him lot, and, right? Him, yeah, how many games is how many games did Bradley Beal miss? Devin Booker's probably, missed 15 games. Probably Durant's missed nine. Bill I'm sorry, they're 36, 26, that's 62. So De- Barrett's missed seven. Booker's missed 12. Bill, Bill missed half. 29. Half. Um, yeah, and he's, you know, uh, if Bill can play, they're a, they're a threat. Yeah. And if, if Bill can play, 
They're a threat to the Nuggets. Yeah, yeah, because they have a nice They're, they can they have the guys that can score. Grayson, I like Grayson. And on Grayson's team. shooting forty seven percent from three. You know, you so yeah, got... I don't I don't think the Lakers are a contender. Oh I man, think... Eric Gordon still solid. I don't think Lakers are a contender. I think they're going to get waxed. I think they're not going to make the playoffs. I think the Warriors will beat them in the play-in, and it'll be over. It'll be over. The Warriors, we won't, um, the Warriors just can't beat the Lakers. When oh, now they can't time. beat the – oh, so, okay. So, now, uh, now, so, Steph they, can't go, so Steph can't go for 50. He can, but they, mm-hmm. them not having a big man against the Lakers always come back to hunt them. Mm-hmm. Okay. What's the record against the Lakers this year? Probably that. I think the only one that won. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to look it up. I'm going to look it up. The one game they won the other day. When? Uh, when I, I, I think. Uh, uh, let's see here. The, the Lakers and the Warriors. Le- LeBron didn't play after the All Star game. The Lakers. Well, the Lakers beat the Warriors 145, 144 in double overtime. That's when Curry had 46. Uh-huh. That was their first game. And then they beat the Lakers by 18 on February 22nd. LeBron didn't, LeBron didn't play All Star. I thought. I thought. Injuries don't matter. You told me that the other day. Come on now. For certain players. Again, man, again, on. like I said, when you're missing your best – what the hell? I got this in the background here on ESPN. Um, when your best player, like John Morant, misses is, is hurt, it matters. He missed one game. Again, he. he I, I just asked you, and you told me, yes, one day to the next, you can wake up in pain, and the next day you might not be in pain. LeBron's in that just, every day. He's 53 and he, years and he, old. Well, now he's got a bum ankle. He's 53 now, years yeah, old. Now, now, he, now he has a bum ankle. He's 54 years okay. old. So now he has a bum ankle. He's, so one day he may wake up in pain, the next day he may not. He's 55 years old. Okay, he, just, he just gained three years in like three seconds. He's 56 so, years old. Because, you know, De'Aaron Fox also, I mean, this guy, he broke his finger in game four of that series versus the Warriors. This index finger on his shooting hand. And they still won and, game and they still and won game actually, they, 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 yeah, and he didn't realistically – like, that's why I asked you. I asked what, you this thing's for on, a reason. Hold on, hold on. What's his finger? I asked you for a reason. Was his finger the problem when they could have stopped Curry from scoring 50? Was his finger the problem when he shot 24 for 62 over the last three games? Was his finger the problem? Was his pro- finger a problem when he shot 35% from the Curry field over the last three games? 50. They lost on their home court in Curry, game five. Curry had 50. It was nine for 25 on their home court in game five of that series. Yeah, that, that's great. That's, Again, and in game six, he was five for 19. All right. So, okay. yes, Curry had 50. Agree, agree to disagree that I'm right. De'Aaron Fox was five for 19. If De'Aaron Fox is 15 for 19, that's 20 points. 15 for 19. If he's 12 for 19 and gets to the free throw line, again, you are discounting injuries for certain people. No. For some reason, you want to discount injuries and ignore them when I just asked no, you a question. No, he was, he was hurt. That's not yeah, injured. He played. Real, Nick, have you ever played basketball with a broken index finger on your shooting hand? I played with a broken leg before, and I had 32 okay, points, bro, bro, 15 assists. Bro, I don't know where the hell that was at. What was that, in, in, in um, NBA 2K? YMCA, third grade, unstoppable. You had a broken leg? You had a broken leg? Yes. What, yes. Where, what, where did you break your leg? Your, your fibula, your tibia? Your fibula, yes. your tibia? Your, 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 your femur? Yes, and that scored. Oh, that, so you broke, we, you were walking around with a cast from from nut to fucking ankle. Yes, and I still went out there and dropped thirty two points, fifteen assists, seven boards, third grade, unstoppable. <laughs> oh, buddy. Um, the Lakers go, play the go, Warriors. Google it. Google it. I'm gonna Google go, it. I'm gonna Google it. The Lakers play the Warriors next Saturday. Once again, the Lake. Do the Lakers have a home game every Saturday night now? They should, but the schedule is tough for them. They got Milwaukee. They yeah, got- they, they play Milwaukee tomorrow um, or something. No, they're playing at – okay, I'm looking at Golden State. They got Denver again. Yeah, but, yeah, <laughs> and they, but they're going to go fucking like 15 and 4 on the, the they final got, final they eight. They got to Yeah, okay. So the, the Lakers play the Warriors next week at home. Once again, they're at home as usual, it seems like. And they got the Lakers again. So they played twice. They're 1-1 one one this year. All right. <laughs> Anyhow – yeah, I don't think the Lakers are contenders. Nick does, and that's it for this one. So we will wrap this one up unless you have any final words on this particular topic. Uh, nothing? Nothing. Nothing. I think, I think we went on enough. <laughs> yeah, on and on. So with that said, um, we're jumping into our our team, the Miami oh. Heat. Um, we just blew a game versus the Dallas Mavericks where we were up 15 in the first quarter, and Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo decided they didn't want to play really all that hard tonight. Um, and then all of a sudden, Luka Doncic, who did nothing in the first half, went absolutely fucking bonkers in the third quarter. Um, 
the end of both, I, I don't know, the refereeing at times, I, I don't like to blame referees, but when I watch a guy travel three straight times on three straight possessions, they get a bucket each time. I want to punch a hole in my TV screen. <laughs> not, not the one behind me, because that's cost too much money. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, a, a cheaper one, because that was just completely ridiculous watching the travels that they got away with in the last quarter um, after the Heat took the lead. Dante Exum traveled three times. <laughs> he made some big Four. shots. Yeah, but he traveled in the same possession. He, <laughs> like, took four steps, and they didn't call it. That said, we are going to talk about the Miami Heat and the all-time lineup. So what do we mean by all-time lineup? We're picking a fi- starting five, and we are picking three bench players. This can be any array of players that you want, whether it's the best guys that have ever played for the Heat or however you want to do it. And uh, so the floor is yours, Nick. Who was right. on your top? Who was your um, all-time Miami Heat team? So we're making a roster of a team that's going to go out there. My best eight players. I got five starters. They all got to be cohesive and work together. Then I got to bring off three people off my bench and my rotation. I just want to have an eight-man rotation. It's the playoff time. We need to get a win. I'm not going deep down into my bench. So these are the eight players that I'm rolling with. And these are the players that I'm going to play together. We're going to mix and match them, you know, to make a great team that could go out there and win 82 games out of 82 games. All right, this is how I'm starting off. 82 of 82. <laughs> this is how I'm starting off, fellas, ladies and gentlemen. At my point guard position, it's a two-time champion for the Miami Heat. He went to four championships. Um, I'm going to pick him when he played for the Miami Heat in year 12 and 13. The year 12-13 season, when he shot 56%, 40% from three-point line, which was amazing. I think that was the Ray Allen effect. 27 points per game, eight boards, seven assists. We're going to go at LeBron, the King James. Did you say Ray Allen line. effect? You mean the Ray Allen saved his ass oh, in the I finals think, effect? Think, uh, hold on, wait, wait a minute now. Wait a minute. What? What's wrong? You heard me the whole time? Okay, okay, I'm sorry. My, yeah. Um, and at my two put your headphones. Put your headphones. At my two guard. Yeah. I'm getting echo now. At my two guard position, it will be Dwayne Wade. Oh eight, oh nine, Dwayne Wade. Um, who should have been the MVP? He was robbed. Um, they gave it to LeBron that year, and it should have been Dwayne Wade. He averaged thirty points per game. I'm I believe he was right on 50%. He actually shot the ball decent for his standard at 32%. 1.2 blocks as a guard. I mean, how can you go with anybody besides that year doing weight? At my three, at my three, this is where I get a little different than a, probably a normal thinker because I am Coach Taylor. And Coach Taylor, when he's out there, he's the wide in his lineup. He come up with dynamic, dynamic people to play with each other. So right now at my three, I'm going with Eddie Jones, the 29 year old, my, the 29 year old Miami Heat, Eddie Jones, because you know he's playing with LeBron. LeBron is orchestrating my team. He's my point guard. I need shooters out there who could defend. Six six long, getting the passing lanes, shoot the ball at 38 to 40 percent from three point line. We're going with Eddie Jones. At my four, we're playing new age basketball. We're stretching it out. We're going with Glenn Rice. It's pretty simple. Glenn Rice, 94-95, shot the ball from three at 41%. He get his own buckets when I need him to, but he's going to spot up out there. He's going to knock him down. I can count on him. Big dog, Glenn Rice. I mean, he's not big dog, but he's Glenn Rice. Y'all get what I'm saying. At my center position, we're going with um, – Sha- nope, I'm lying. We're going with Alonzo Mourning. Yeah, y'all thought Shaquille O'Neal, huh? No, we're going with Alonzo Mourning because LeBron is running this this unit. So I need a big guy who's going to be my anchor. I don't need nobody I'm throwing the ball down to who's clogging the paint. I need a big guy who could go out there and anchor my defense. And Alonzo Mourning, in 99-2000, he gave us four blocks per game, basically 21 points per game. He actually shot the free throw percent, shot the free throw at 71%. Shout out to Zoe. Uh, <laughs> and he goes, anchor my defense just like I need him to do. Don't really need the ball. He can still hit the little mid-range jump shot. He don't have to be in the paint the whole time. Coming off my bench, um, at least for the first, I mean, I might have to throw him in as a starter just because he might threaten to beat my ass, um, will be Shaquille O'Neal. Shaquille is coming off the bench 0405. He wasn't the same Shaq. 
even though a lot of people say that, you know, he kind of carried us, but he really did it. I think it was still D. Wade, even though Wade was in his second year. Shaq gave us 23 points per game, 2.3 blocks, 10, 10 rebounds, 60% from the field goal percent. And he shot the free throw at like 41%, all right, 45, but it's terrible, all the same to me. Um, Shaq is my backup because when I take out LeBron, we're running our offense through Shaq. But we're going to have Lamar Odom also coming off the bench with him because we need a 6'11 guy who can run the point forward. He can bring the ball up. Um, he can make plays for us, get us in transition. He can slow it down. He can play off Shaq really well, pass it to him, cut. Big man, he can see everything. He can make all the passes. He can do everything that I need him to do. We're going with L.O. as our dynamic point forward off the bench. And last but not least, where we're going to go, with, I thought about this one. I just wanted to know who was going to be my third guy. Do I go with a, a heater like Rex Chapman, a guy who steps in Michael Jordan's face and talks shit to him and say, I ain't scared of you. I'm going to light your ass up and did light Michael Jordan up. So I thought about Rex Chapman because I was like, I can use that shooting off my bench. Give me a Vinnie Johnson type, microwave type feeling. And I was like, no, I got to go with Tim Hardaway. Because it's Timmy, you know, Timmy with the crossover. Timmy, you know, got the jump shot. He could still shoot. He could get his points, but he's small. I'm going with Jimmy Butler, who shoots 45% for the Miami Heat this year from three. He could still shoot. He could get his own buckets. Jimmy the butt, the Buckets Butler. Big coffee, big buckets, big shooting. He's, he's my third player. And then as my assistant coach would be you, Donis Haslam, I need somebody who I'm giving the authorization to to come off the bench and knock a motherfucker out. I don't care. We're paying his fine. Um, we have a little extra money at Carnival Cruise Line. He can pick it up. He can do whatever he wants to go knock a motherfucker out on the court. He's going to be our henchman, but he's doing it as an assistant coach. And then as my head coach, I thought about this. Maybe Van Gundy, just to annoy the hell out of Shaq. But then we're going to fire him and we're going to bring Pat Riley in like they did before because I think Pat Riley can manage all the egos that we're going to have on our team. You know, you got to deal with Shaq. You got to deal with the diva, LeBron. You got to deal with uh, you got to deal with Wade, even though Wade is a good guy. You got to deal with Odom, who know what Odom is doing at Tootsies at night. Um, you got to get him to practice the next day. So we're going to go with Pat Riley to manage all these egos. Wait, um, Rudy, your time. I, I'll listen to your Miami Heat lineup. Uh, I can't be better than mine. It just can't. <laughs> well, if, if I mean, if Lamar Odom goes to Vegas, he might end up at the Bunny Ranch rapper, Bunny or Ranch, Tootsie. whatever, whatever you call it in Vegas, where he would he was apparently supposedly I don't know had an overdose and died, or, and then was revived or what have you. Yeah, because you definitely don't want the Clippers version of Lamar Odom. No. Um, <laughs> my team. Um, is uh, starting off at point guard with uh, Tim Hardaway. He was all NBA first team in 1997. He was top shelf as our, he's our the best point guard that he's ever had uh, and um, was a killer in late game situations. Never afraid of the shot, uh, never afraid to take the shot. And, and I want a guy who's never afraid. And, you know, a lot of guys are afraid to take that shot when it's they're not afraid in the first quarter, but in the fourth quarter with the time running out, their asses tighten up, and they don't want that shot. Timmy always wanted that shot. My shooting guard, obviously, is going to be Dwayne Wade, um, who at one point was, whether people like it or not, was the best player in the world uh, for about two, a year and a half, to about two years, definitely two years. Um, after winning the finals, he was the best player in the world, better than Kobe, better than LeBron. He was mm -hmm. the best in the world. And then, and then unfortunately, uh, after 08, his knees uh, gave out on him, and they, you know, he started to have his decline. He led the league in scoring. Was that in 09? 08, 09. 09. 08, 09, yeah. Um, you know, but then his knees just started getting bad, unfortunately. If, if Dwayne Wade had not had bad knees, Dwayne Wade probably could have, you know, been a 35,000-point scorer, potentially. Um, my small forward is Jimmy Butler. Uh, Jimmy Butler is a dog, and he does not need to shoot to win. In fact, he doesn't look to shoot. Tonight was indicative of that against the Mavericks, where he just didn't want to shoot, and uh, which was very disappointing because because he didn't shoot is probably why we lost the game. He likes to trust his teammates, which is appreciated appreciated 
but to an extent where I, I'd rather you take those shots, you know, in the later in the game. But uh, you know, for a team like this, he's a defensive dog. He is tough as hell. He is a great playmaker, and uh, yeah, he's that dude. And if you get a version of him like the Milwaukee Bucks series, he's probably the best player in the world. Because in that series, he was the best player in the world. LeBron James is my power forward. Even though he can't guard a real Only power David forward. Um, it, it, oh, God <laughs> almighty. Even though he can't guard a real power forward, is a lot, he can't guard Tim Duncan either. Even though, and I, you know, I, when I say guard, I don't mean a possession. I'm going to repeat that. I don't mean when someone says someone can guard one through five. If you, I think LeBron can guard a point guard all game. Thiago. Listen, what I'm saying. Uh, okay. I think LeBron can guard a point guard all game. I think LeBron can guard a shooting guard all game. I think LeBron can guard a small forward all game. I do th- th- this whole concept that he can guard one through five. It is cute. It's sweet. But the reality is, could he guard a possession here and there? Absolutely. Can he guard a center all game? No, he'd foul out. Could he guard a power forward all game in the post? Maybe in today's NBA, he can because they're standing 24 feet from the rim. But in real NBA, where power forwards were powerful and tough and not a bunch of fucking 6'10", 205-pound pussies, yeah, he couldn't guard those guys like on a consistent basis. He would get he would be in foul trouble. But he'd be my power forward. Um, the season he had in uh, 13, was it 13, where he shot 56-plus percent? It's the best, that's the best season he's ever had. People can sit here and say, you know, I've heard people say his he had a season in Cleveland that was better. Hell no. The two seasons he had in Miami, 11-12, 12-13, were the best two seasons of his life. That 13 season, to shoot 56.5% from the field, like that's ridiculous for a, for a, for a small forward. It's ridiculous. And he was dominating games out yeah. of the post. He didn't have this new version. I get, I don't know why the Lakers don't oh, use him in the no. post, quite frankly. I, I, I don't get it. You want to have him, you want to have him, um, you know, shooting threes occasionally, fine. But to, the, I don't know why at 39 they have him outside playing it 27 feet from the rim. It he just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Turn it, even his turn and face game, it was just. Yeah, yeah it, was it was great. Just, it was. It was ridiculous. It was incredible. Like I, I mean, and you, you know, I'm not. I, you know, I don't like him, you know, personally, but I respect his game. His game's incredible, and I don't know him personally. I don't like him, his persona. <laughs> let's let's fix that. Because maybe if I knew him personally, I would. I, I don't know. Because the way he, n- n- his narrative publicly with trying to manipulate it all the time, I can't stand that. Because I don't see any other players do that stuff, and I hate that stuff. Um, the one place he didn't really do that was in Miami. Believe it or not, because he was hated in Miami, and that's the funny thing. The four years in Miami, he was the most despised player in basketball. Would you disagree? Well, that's true. I mean, it, it kind of grew. Yeah. It kind of changed after. The first year, he was absolutely yeah. hated. And we ate, and as fans, we ate his hate. And we defended yeah. this guy all the time. And then he goes back to Cleveland, and he's the most loved guy on the planet again. <laughs> goes to the Lakers, love like crazy. Comes to Miami, he's absolutely no. hated. It's crazy. And my center would be Alonzo Mourning. Alonzo Mourning would not need to touch the ball offensively. He's the one of the greatest defensive centers of all time. Block shots, defend, rebound, all that stuff. And, yeah, I mean, he could get a, a, a clunky-looking hook shot where he's, like, banging, like he's punching the air to throw a hook up in the air. Um, but uh, Alonzo Mourning would absolutely be, absolutely be my center. Off my bench, uh, Shaq would be my backup center. And yeah, he'd hate coming off the bench, but for the similar reasons, like he clogs the lane. So he had, if like, there's a reason it, LeBron could not function with a guy like Shaq, who is, is okay. young Shaq, young Shaq, young Shaq, not even the Lakers Shaq, Orlando we Shaq. Because, because, huh? Like, yeah, or, Orlando Shaq, he was athletic and moved. Lakers Shaq, he was 400 pounds. Like, he was massive. And he just stood in the paint, pretty much five, four to five feet from the rim. Um, and if LeBron's game is based on drive and kick and drive to the basket, nowhere to drive to if they have a four hundred pound dude in the middle of the lane. Um, my, I have a Chris Bosh who can double up as a small forward, power forward. I mean, when he got to Miami, he was a post player, and he had a great fifteen, seventeen foot mid range game. Because of how LeBron plays, Chris Bosh became a three point shooter. Standing in the corner, 
Um, his three point shot, you know, improved exponentially while he was here, which is part of the problem with today's game is all these guys want to shoot threes when they're seven feet tall. His what? three point shooting saved us against the Celtics in, in Indiana. Dude, he's, I mean, no, he was huge. I mean, he, he, he all of a sudden he was shooting threes from the corner. I mean, I didn't do nah, else, he, he, was he was great. I mean, I think, I think Bosch was very underrated and, um, un, un, unfortunately he had the blood clots because I, I, I believe that if Chris Bosch does not have those blood clots in his legs, Miami beats Cleveland in the playoffs. Miami with Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosch yes. beats LeBron in yeah, the playoffs. Yeah. Because LeBron was pe- – LeBron, once he left Miami, and went, he could yeah, not win sense. down here. He could he, – there was a problem against the Heat. It was a mental thing against the Heat. And if he – you know, yeah, we you lost to the Raptors, I think it was. In, you know what else? What? Dwayne Wade got up for what? LeBron like no other. Yeah, of he course he did. LeBron, he got up for Kobe. Of course he did. And and I mean, and people, you know, I think LeBron had one or two more wins over Wade in this in head-to-head. Well, again, they're not head-to-head. He's 6'3", and LeBron's 6'8", 6'9". Like, they're not guarding each other, realistically. Um, but D. Wade, I mean, there was actually a thing on the OGs with uh, a podcast with uh, Udonis Saslam and Mike Miller that Dwayne Wade and LeBron played one-on-one, and Dwayne Wade beat him, you know, when they were in Miami. Dwayne Wade beat him. That And Udonis Saslam said it. He says LeBron's the best player I've ever played with, but one on one, Dwayne Wade beat LeBron, that. which is I can see it. <laughs> I can absolutely see it. You know, so because one on one's different. <laughs> you know, it's a different type of game. Now, um, Bosch was uh, B- Bosch. If he had been healthy, and I, I would have loved. Uh, God, that would have been so nice to see that happen. But unfortunately, it didn't happen. And my final player, I debated on this between three guys. One of them was Ray Allen, but Ray Allen version we got was yeah. not Ray Allen. He won. He saved our ass, but that wasn't Ray Allen. I looked at Duncan Robinson because Duncan Robinson's resurgence this year has been absolutely amazing. Whatever therapist he talked to needs to put a billboard. I saved Duncan Robinson and become the athlete therapist because this guy's confidence went from here to here and back up to here. I mean, and his game has improved incredibly defensively. He's gotten better. His backdoor cuts to the rim. I mean, his passing has improved. I mean, everything about his game has improved. And, he, and he's now a great shooter again. Like, watching him shoot again is just beautiful. But I went with Glenn Rice. G-Money, I, I, I grew up on Glenn Rice. I was my favorite player when I was a kid with, from watching the Heat. You know, I am 46 years old. For, so, Glenn Rice, I remember when Glenn Rice won the national championship with Michigan in 89. Um, you know, so, yeah, I, I, I'm a humongous Glenn Rice fan. People don't really seem to remember how good Glenn Rice was. And, what, and the fact that and, – and this is when we talk about Hall of Fame stuff. When Manu Ginobili's in the Hall of Fame, but Glenn Rice is not, is a disgrace. And I don't think Glenn Rice is a Hall of Famer. And that's why I say stuff like Manu Ginobili in the Hall of Fame is a joke. Dennis Rodman in the Hall of Fame is a joke. Uh, uh, Draymond Green in the Hall of Fame is a joke. Glenn Rice is a better player than all those guys. He was, had a better career. He was the number one option for most of his career until he went to the Lakers and won a championship playing with Shaq and Kobe. And he was the third option. He averaged like 16, 17 points a game. He was their third leading scorer. But that guy was the number one option for most of his career. And he had a 26.8 per game season with the, with the Hornets. I mean, he had, a, he had about five or six, seven straight seasons, averaging 22 or, or, or more a game. I mean, he had a couple of 25, 26s in there. Glenn Rice was that dude. And the fact that he gets so overlooked when all these other players in today's fluffy NBA – I mean, Glenn Rice in today's NBA, oh, my God, he'd have a field day. Shooting? My God. This is what I'm talking about when I say shooting. When guys can't bang you running through the paint and running across the lane. Reggie Miller's talked about this many times. When you ran through the, through the lane, you get a forearm by a power forward who's not guarding you. It takes you off your line. It just takes you off. You can't do that anymore. I, I just think Glenn Rice, if, if, if you have guys like that in the Hall of Fame, he should be in the Hall of Fame. It didn't what? happen as often as y'all make it seem it happen. I say it didn't happen he, as often yeah. as y'all made it seem it happen. It didn't. No, it ha- Reggie Miller said it happened all the time. That's the thing. Reggie Miller played. I mean, yeah. I didn't play. I can't speak Reggie, for him. But that's one person. That's but one shooters. Person. That's sure. one. But no, it happened to shooters yes, all the time. more than one shoot on the court now. That's the difference. If, if, okay, if, 
if they're running, what I'm saying is when they ran through the lane, people got bowed off the line all the time. You can't do that now. You're not allowed to. It's a foul. Cut, split, cuts, all type of different actions that's coming off the, the new regular basic. Building. Okay. If Steph Curry is 6'2", 180 pounds. If Steph Curry got forearm shivered the way these guys got in the 90s, would he be – I think he'd be a great shooter. I'm not saying he wouldn't be an amazing shooter still. Would he be the yes. same shooter? Yes. You, you think so? So when he's on his back and he can't he, – remember, he's lighter than a feather. He's skinny as hell. He would – like, you catch one of these every time through the, rim, through the lane. I remember guys back then didn't wear body suits like they do now. I mean, I remember Dwayne Wade was wearing body pads and knee pads and thigh pads. When you played basketball, did you wear freaking thigh pads and – Body rib pads. These guys, you didn't, and that was in college in 2007, yeah. 8, 9, 10. Dwayne Wade was wearing, knee, was wearing a body armor suit under his uniform when he played. It's crazy. And I know guys weren't wearing that shit in the 80s and 90s. But that'd but be my he, team. My coach he would be Eric Spolster. Huh? To get up shots and things like that. I'm not saying they couldn't get up. Okay. I'm not saying they couldn't get up shots. And Steve Kerr wasn't running around in circles. He was spotting up. Different Ooh. player. I you mean, know that. eventually they're going to call a foul. You're just wilding out like that. You can't just do it all the time. You can get away with it. You know, act like it was out there playing it was World War freaking three. When, when, the Knicks, when the Knicks played the Pacers and, and Reggie Miller hit eight points in 15 seconds, did he yes. push off? Yes. Would that be called a foul today? I don't know. Off yes. they might get away with it. Still. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it would. You can't get away with anything office, now. Get away with you can't. You can't get away with. And you can't two hand shove someone like in the to, back to where they fall on the like ground. Just go up what? And give a left hand, left left shoulder to somebody. And, get... and he got a fucking not an offensive one, foul called him. That one was clean. The one where he dribbled in and pulled and turned. He didn't. He, he didn't throw it out though. He didn't use that his hands. The... Reggie Miller two hands. No, the one was blatant that yeah. Jimmy Butler just did. Reggie Miller two hand shoved Greg Anthony yeah. in the back. That's why he was wide open. I mean, I was happy because I hated the Knicks, but um, they ended up losing that series anyhow. But that's my team. Coach is Eric Spolstra. I'm the assistant coach. I'm grabbing the water. I'm going to get a paycheck. And um, that's all I got for that team. Um, being that we're going we're gonna to wrap this one up. Uh, I'll, I'll be doing a separate Rudy's rant on another video, um, you know, because I still have to rant. But I know uh, we wanted to get some content out there for you guys. But Nick, what do you got left for us? What what do you, what do you have to say? Uh, now you had a pretty good one yesterday. Uh, I'm gonna go back into it. Um, we're gonna go back into the goat conversations. Um, I think. Oh yeah, that was today's it. Yeah. Day and age, people are just throwing around the word "goat," which means the greatest of all time, around too loosely. Um, I think um, an instance happened with Kyan Anthony or Keon. Uh, Carmelo's son. son. I don't know how you pronounce it, but his mother mm -hmm. recently, I think they were doing a podcast or whatnot, and she asked him, who's your goat? And the, the boy had the audacity to tell his mother. The un unmitigated the gall. Unmitigated gall <laughs> to tell his mother that playoff Pete, Paul George, was his goat. I, I'm hearing this a lot lately that a lot of these young kids are saying Paul George is their GOAT. But to be in the GOAT conversation, you have to reach a certain stratosphere. You've got to be up here. Like, I can understand you saying Kobe Bryant. Because even if they, these kids are young, so they're not going to say Michael Jordan. They didn't watch Michael Jordan. They just seen maybe highlights or heard people talk about this, this godlike creature who flew over mountains to dunk the ball. Um, and made amazing shots. So you have people in our generation or these kids' generation like LeBron James, you have um, Steph Curry, you even have Kobe Bryant if you want to go that far. And I'm probably missing one. Oh, and Kevin Durant. So those are people who have loved one, who stepped up in big-time moments, made big-time shots, made big-time defensive stops, got MVPs and things in that nature. And for you to come out there and say, Paul George, it's freaking blasphemous. It's wild. It's just insane. I don't. I, I couldn't even fathom him coming out there and saying. 
not alone, it's not the problem that he already didn't say his dad who was probably a great player, but his dad didn't win. And he said like, yeah, his mom was like, but how do you not say your dad? He's like, man, my dad really didn't win. He went or do it. Did pl- playoff P win? He still thinks that that was a bad shot by Damian Lillard. <laughs> so, I mean, I just don't like these kids throwing this word around because that's, let, let me, they can say that's their favorite player, but their favorite player and GOAT is two different things. Like, back in 1998-99 season, the trust we were when to play for the New York Knicks. And that was a short season, I believe, that year. And they end up going to the championship. And Latrell. Yeah, they were the, they were the AC Latrell that year. Latrell was my favorite player. I, I left becoming a, a Chicago Bulls fan because Jordan retired. And I had to find a new player. And Latrell Spiro, I don't know if it was cornrows or something about his game. I just liked him. He was energetic. He was wild. He, he got to his spots. He got his jump shot off. I just, I just was enamored by how he played. But you think I would have went out there on Flavor Flav's internet, because Flavor Flav was popping back then, maybe a little bit later, and said, yeah, Latrell Spiro is the GOAT. No, he's my favorite player of all time, but he's not in the GOAT conversation. That was the wildest. That, that would have been wild of me to say. But these kids now, and that's showing that Lord have mercy, what they're looking up to is just crazy. That they will say, Paul George, who doesn't have an MVP, doesn't have a, a, a championship, doesn't even have a championship appearance. And it is a team sport, but he has been a part of it by scoring five points in big time games when his teammate named Russell West, Westbrook needed him. A situation like that, where he's folded plenty of times, even as a Clipper, when you know when his team in LA needed him, and to call him your goat, it just shows me that maybe basketball is going down the drain, and these are my last days of watching it. Because, yeah, <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I, I agree. I think basketball is going on the drain. I think Carmelo Anthony should write him out of the will, remove any trust that involved his son. Because for him to say that, I thought was as distasteful as it gets. It shows a massive lack of appreciation for your father. Um, and it's not like your father was, I don't know, uh, Alan Ogg or, or Pat Cummings or Terry Davis or Kevin Edwards or Jory Sparrow. He's a top 20, I don't know if he's top, top 20, 30. but he's way up there in top 30 scorer of all time. I mean, he was an elite, he's an elite, elite basketball player. And I know I've heard him say that he could beat his dad right now. No, the hell no, he not couldn't. Sure. No, he couldn't. Not if his dad wanted to play. Like, if he really wanted to play, like NBA play, kind of, Kai and Anthony would be on his ass. It would be it would be eleven yeah. nothing, or fifteen nothing, or twenty one nothing, or whatever they're playing to. The other side would be zero, because if Carmelo, even in his defensive inability in the I, NBA, he would his son couldn't get a shot. I don't over think his Carmelo head. was that bad. I just think the narrative went with him. Well, that was the narrative. Uh, that was the narrative. Yeah, that was the narrative that, that they didn't that defend. Bad, especially I when mean, you play LeBron, you know he got. LeBron. I don't. Know. <clears throat> but I. I would, he'd be out of my will. Um, he'd be out of my will, and I would probably tell him to move him, pack his shit, and get the fuck out. <laughs> Although he lives with his mother, so that's part of the, you know, I would tell her to move him the fuck out. Let him go live in a homeless shelter but for I a little while. I understand him being objective but, and not saying his dad for the reasons that he <clears> said. But say it's Michael Jordan, or, I mean, it could be, you, you pick a guy so who's. you said because your dad didn't win a ring or, you know, accolades. What is it? And this goes back to yeah. ring culture, I, which I hate. Ring culture doesn't make also, you great. It's not yeah. it doesn't make you great. You're not the a great player because you it is. Yeah, if you're determining who the best is, yeah, then you could you could that might be I a determining factor at the end. Them at the end, but you just picked yeah. Paul George. Like you yeah. picked Paul, Paul George. George you didn't even end, pick you. You didn't even pick Kawhi yeah. Leonard. You picked Paul George. It's baffling to me. And if and if I'm his dad, I'm not really happy about it. But that's oh, yeah, weird. Weird. Um, I'm wrapping it up with this. Actually, real quick, I want to read you off the last 18 games of the Lakers. They play Milwaukee, Minnesota, 
Okay. They're, so Milwaukee just got beat by 35 by going to say, do you think they're going to lose again? LeBron, um, um, they're ver- at home versus Milwaukee, home versus Minnesota, at Sacramento, who they haven't beaten this year. Home versus Golden State, home versus Atlanta, home versus Philly, home versus Indiana, at Milwaukee, at Memphis, at in, don't even know this win loss. I'm just reading the schedule to you because the win loss thing with the Lakers is you can't know you cannot predict. They're 34 and 30. So if you really want to pick it, they're 99 in this 18 games more than likely, and they end up 43 and 39. Um, at Bro- they have a six game road trip to the East. Milwaukee, Memphis, Indiana, Brooklyn, Toronto, Washington. I mean, luckily for them, they're playing some of the yeah. worst teams, but Toronto's never easy to play at. Um, Indiana scores up and down. Hmm. It means they finish 45 and 37. Um, then they got Cleveland at home, Minnesota again, Golden State again, Memphis on the road, and then they have New- they finish the year at New Orleans. Um, that's not an easy schedule, I will say, in my opinion. That said, uh, my closing is Angel Reese. Angel Reese, I've been talking a lot about Caitlin Clark of late, and that was a topic that we had in yesterday's podcast, unfortunately, which we did not add today. We will come back to Caitlin Clark next week and give her her flowers for breaking an all-time record. Um, Angel Reese, though, has been recently, because she had her senior day at senior night at LSU, <clears throat> and she recently, there's questions on whether or not she's going to turn pro or stay at LSU. Some people have mentioned transferring. I don't know why she would have to transfer. She has an extra year if she wants to come back. I think she should go back to LSU. I think she's going to make a truckload of money at LSU. They're dropping off the Brinks truck at her house to go play in the WNBA where the salary for the number one rookie, number one pick for rookie is 77000 So she won't make $77,000. she will be lower than that. She will be sacrificing so much cash for what? To go play for seventy five grand. She she doesn't have the corporate sponsors that Caitlin Clark has. She doesn't have the type of game that would even command that. There's too many big women. I'm going to say big women, I mean tall women. Um, who she's six three. She's very athletic. Great she's boy. a great defensive player. She's a she's a horse yeah. on the rebound on rebounding, but she can't shoot a lick. Like her, if you if you go and watch a video of her shooting a, her jump shot from the elbow, it's it's horrifying. It's it's. Pfft. It's Joel and Anthony type shit. <laughs> ben Wallace looking stuff. I mean, it's not pretty. And you're talking about going up against women like Asia Wilson and, and, and Tina Charles and John Quill Jones and, and Brianna Stewart and Kaya Stokes and Satu Sabali and women like that who are, who are big time and, and they're bigger than her too. Uh, and they're dominating in the, in the paint. You know, I, I think she can be a really good NBA, WNBA player. But I think she needs to balance her game out a little bit more because if all she can do is rebound and get putbacks, that makes her, that makes her Dennis Rodman. Oh, wow. And while that might be great, while that might be great in terms of you get respected fifteen or twenty years later because Dennis Rodman made two All Star games in like seventeen seasons, he was not respected while he was playing. He gets a lot more respect today because I don't think he should be in the Hall of Fame either. Like I told you, I think he was a great rebounder he might he be the greatest said, rebounder ever but i always, always huh? said about hall of famers that a lot of people shouldn't be in I, they had to like be a leader 1a or 1b on their team get yeah. That team to, yeah to me if you're a third option if you're the third or fourth or fifth option or, or the eighth option scoring wise i i just don't you have to score in basketball <laughs> like all this shit about defending you have to score and you and i both know end of the day to make or miss league you can defend someone perfectly. I just watched Luka Doncic hit a shot over Caleb Martin where Caleb Martin was literally in his jock. Now, I will say this. Caleb Martin did that Ole waving over his left arm you shit. He didn't actually contest with his left hand in front of the shot because, huh? No, what I'm saying is he couldn't. He did. This goes back oh. to the rules. If he sticks his hand up with his left hand, and Luka Doncic hits his hand. But it's going to be called a foul. Contest his and, shot, him or Larry Bird. They have the height. You can well, just, well. You know how Shane. You know how Shane Battier no, contested but, shots. But those with people that. Yeah, yeah. Like that. that. that You're, that you can't be, like that. And, and, like, and, and that would be mad. What? Like, well, Shane Battier was one yeah, of the best defenders, defensive defensive like, defensive like, players of all time. Like, He's a. I, I mean, that's that's not fun. So, but again, he was in his jock strap was the point. And 
you know, I mean, for, I forgot where I was going with this because I just lost Sorry. my train of thought. But um, <clears throat> we don't. We're talking about yeah. Angel what Reese. was I saying? Angel Reese. But it was it was it was to the point of yeah. If all you are is a defensive player, you're like you you'll be good. You might stick around. And the thing the problem is in today's WNBA, there's mm-hmm. only twelve teams, so that might not keep mm-hmm. you around. This isn't a, a thirty team league. This is a twelve team league. So there's not there were first round picks last year that got cut. Mm-hmm. Like think about being a first round pick in the NBA I, and getting I like cut. Angel. I think I think cut. she should stick around for a lot. I, I think she should stay in school. Get paid. She'll make two plus million dollars staying in school. She will not make that play in the WNBA, not with salary and endorsements. Because let's be real. When was the last pair of female sneakers you bought, Nick? When did you last buy a pair of Candace Parkers or a pair of Brianna Stewart's or Ella, Don, Ella Delena Della Don's? The, 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 the 30th of February. Yeah, never. So um, the, the endorsements are not the same. And she only she probably has more local. I've never seen her on a commercial. So, you know, that said, I, I think she should stay in school and um and, and make and get paid. Get paid. That said, one final thing. I want to give props to Cam Newton and kudos to Cam Newton because last week he came out on his own podcast and he basically owned that altercation at the seven on seven. A week ago, a week ago, I you know, I said that Cam Newton probably did some crap and he did. Initially it looked like he was just being jumped. Then it turns out he was running his mouth and he knew all these guys and these guys who knew him. And he did make contact with them first. He admitted all this stuff. He owned everything. And I have a lot of respect for that. So I say kudos to you, Cam Newton, because that showed a growth in you and and a man about you that, you know, you recognize that this was, that should never have happened. And these seven on sevens are for kids. And we have to start acting like adults when we go to these events and, and I appreciate him, you know, just as a fan of, of, of sports, that he would come and own that because a lot of guys don't. And I think five years ago, he probably wouldn't have. So it just shows, an, you know, growth. I still think he's crazy at times with that Brock Purdy garbage. Um, but kudos, Cam Newton, for for all that. I appreciate you. And uh, I know the, probably the most of the sports world appreciates what you did. Um, that said, um, we are Rudy and Nick. If you want, please like, subscribe, and follow us. Come on now podcast at Facebook and Instagram and on TikTok and Twitter. It's come on now pod. Be sure to subscribe to us on every platform, like, share, comment, and we will see you next week. Come on on now. now.